Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm doing a solo playthrough of Obsession. Pretty much Downton Abbey, the board game. So I played it once or twice now in multiplayer mode and I really, really, really enjoyed it a big deal. I do own the upstairs, downstairs expansion, but I think for today I will focus on the solo mode that comes with the base game. The Vesex expansion is part of this. I'm not quite sure which family to play with. I think I might go with that randomly. Um, I've never played this game solo before, so bear with me. And so, but it also comes, the game comes with a lot of, um, let's say, difficulty levels in respect to the AI you are playing against. So I'm pretty sure I will go with somewhat more low scoring one. But I guess let's see how things go, shall we? Okay, and here we are. After some long internal debate, I decided to go with the lowest intermediate AI game, which is the family Fairfax here. So I need to score at least 94 points at the end of the game in order to beat the AI here, the Fairfax family. But don't be so fast. Um, they're also adding any VP cards they have collected along the way, which they usually get when we are doing one of those courtships. So whenever they beat me out in one of those courtship categories with theme cards, they get a VP card. This will score at the end of the game. There is also a variant which at any monuments that they have collected to the total score. I'm not playing with this because again, I have no clue how things go. On my side, I'm playing as the Ponsonby family. And our starting bonus is we have the greatest wealth we made in the game with 300 pounds, which is really something. I really roll a die out of the five families that are available. I believe Cavendish is the family that comes with the Vesak, was it Vesak? I don't know. Um, comes with games. So basically all five games of the base game and the first expansion. So I rolled a die. In the end, it was Ponsonby. And we start the game with five of those servants here. I will come to those when we use them. We have our e basically country estate improvements. These are our basic tile. They all start at the basic side. They all come with the upgraded side where you see this little rose here. But also something I will clarify as I go. I have drawn my two starting guests here. So we have the Honorable Winston Hayward and Miss Penelope Atwood here. They are okay, so they don't provide me any immediate victory points, but that's, I think, the usual theme with those starting characters here with this little crown symbol here. But they're okay, so I will get some money here. I could gain some additional friends. And apart from that, of course, I have my family here. So I have a Theodore, Earl of Ponsonby, and they are pretty much all the same uh, as with all the other families. Some of them start with slightly different family members, but overall they are relatively similar. In respect to the builder's market, I'm not 100% sure if I was lucky or not. At least we have one service tile out here, which we could get relatively inexpensive for 100 pounds, would give me one victory point. And this one victory point here could basically make or break our um, courtship events here. So basically we have season one, season two, season three. So we already know what Fairfax family will score during each of those courtships. So in season one, we know that the essentials category here, we have zero victory points. For service, they have two victory points and so on. So we know um, on these here, we can relax for the first season. So we really have to focus on the first three in order to get the victory point card or maybe get one of the Fairchilds into our guest list here. Sorry for that. So I think overall that's good. Right now we start the game with those improvements. So we already have some victory points. In most cases, those are negative. But the good thing is, let's compare it here again. We know that at sporting the Fairfax family, they're really not that sporty guy, kind of guys. Uh, they will have minus four victory points. We have minus three, so we will beat them. So I think that's already good news. Here we will tie them. So we could also say, ah, tie is okay. We could still score a victory point card for that. Here, yeah, we are definitely four points behind, but we can change that. So these are the three categories we should focus on. We might lose the three victory points here, but I will explain that as we go. And again, yeah, the idea is to score at least 94 points or more. I think we will win with a tie. 
high, but um, the AI player may most likely get some additional victory point cards. So it will be definitely more than just the 94 victory points. Overall, we will play four of those seasons. Each season consists of three regular rounds, one courtship and so on. Um, basically, the courtship is only something where we compare our victory points. And yeah, at the end of the game, we will have a final courtship. And then whoever tally up our score and whoever has the most victory point is the most renowned family in Derbyshire. So let's see about that, right? And I guess without further ado, let's get cracking. The one thing I haven't done yet is to draw our five objective cards. I'm playing the standard game, not the extended game. So that the extended game is 20 turns or so instead of the 15 or 16 we are doing. So we are drawing those five objective cards. And throughout the game, we will definitely lose some of those. We will gain some, but we will also lose some of those objective cards. So let's see what we've got here. So we have a group bonus, the service group, the barn and the brushing room. Oh, awesome. The brushing room is out. Okay, that definitely drives our strategy to some extent. But of course, we have to hope for the barn to come up. But it's not unlikely. Here we have a bon tile bonus for the English garden. We get seven victory points if our reputation is maxed out, which is also, yeah, I think it's possible, but also not easy. I would say here we have a group bonus, so flower room and any garden required. So it's 11 points, definitely quite something. And here we have the literature group, the main library and the north library required. Right now they are not out yet, but yeah, who will, and so this is really something, again, throughout the game, we will get rid of some of those cards, but this is what I like about this game. You really don't have to make that call right off the bat. You really can see how the game develops and then you are being asked to remove some of your objective cards. I think that's really nicely done. I think without further ado, let's get into the first round or turn of the game. We will always be the starting player in this game. So I guess we might want to follow a very standard tactic here, standard strategy here, and that's to start with this village fair planning because we can gain some additional um, reputation and money. And again, in combination with this objective card here, I think that's even more important to do that because twice during the game, we might get some extra reputation from the village fair. So I think that's definitely worth it. Basically, several things would happen now at the start of the round. So we would basically rotate our service here. Then we would take care of the round track. Monuments would activate and the servants hall could be activated. Neither of the things are true for the very first round. So we can basically skip directly into to host activity and as mentioned I think we are going to plan our village fair up here. In order to do that we have to send our butler here. Here it's purple that's somehow confusing but it's clearly the butler and on top of this we have to send two family for that planning. Exactly two planning. It's not up to two family. It's not at least two family. It's two family members, active family members, we have to send right now. Still have all four of those in our hands. So I think we will definitely go with um, yeah, the Countess of Ponsonby, pretty much the lady of the house here. So she will join this. She doesn't come with any requirements in respect to the servant and they will always join our activity. So we don't need to take care of any of those um, rep um, reputation level. So she will take part of this and hmm, what do we have here let's not go with her we can go for 100 pounds or we could go for extra thing here no let's go with Theodore Earl of Ponsonby yeah let's go with him so basically Lord and Lady of the House are joining our village fair planning. So we have invited our guest. That's the fourth step. Then we will basically provide the service. I think this is what we did here. And then we can enjoy our favors. We will start with the money. In this case, we will simply grab 200 pounds. I think that's definitely something that we are up to 500. And usually you start the game with zero bucks. You're pretty pro unless you are the Ponsonby family. So that's at least something. Next, we would check if we would gain any reputation. Right now, there is no British line here on it so we are not doing this either then we could gain some extra cards for example in this case we will use her ability she has two ability we can dismiss one guest but only um, let's say casual guest but right now let's hold on to those they're really great 
or we could go for this and in this case we can grab two of those casual guests and pick one and this is really hugely important because in this huge pile of cards there are also a lot of cards that give you negative victory points negative reputation usually they come with some other benefits so it's also not terribly bad but yeah it's better to choose obviously so we have those two cards and yeah and as i said we have someone who provides us minus three reputation when Whenever we play her, really, whenever we yeah, basically let Derbyshire see that we are meeting with her, but she would give us 800 pounds. I mean, she is an American heiress. Miss Hawkins hails from Connecticut. Her father is in railroads. Okay, so we can get rid of her at the end of the game. So maybe it's not the worst thing in the world. And then on the other side, we have Lady Anne Austin. Lady Anne adores the continent, traveling there whenever possible and visiting France once a year. But she's also pretty great, actually. The 200 pounds is not bad and she would give us another casual guest. So I think in this case, 800 is good, but this is also pretty good card actually we cannot play her right away that's kind of a bummer because in order to play her we need to have a reputation level of two right now we are at one but i'm pretty sure we will get there no i think let's hold on to her for now the heiress will go underneath the deck and yeah she pretty much joins our hand and unfortunately those were already all of our favors though so those go into my discard pile i think let's put it up there somewhere the butler goes back to the expanded service so we cannot use him again for at least two rounds unless we're doing some nasty tricks here but we can now flip the private study to the other side can in this case or we have to um so we have now prepared the village fair so from now on this is an ongoing ability future village fair produce 300 pounds and two reputation the problem is we just lost three victory points down here but i still think it's worth it but no one else can go there in this private study so this is done we have taken care of it we have lost three victory points which right now ties us with the Fairfax family here but the tie is still okay we can still grab a victory point card of this um, but that's pretty much the end of our action now we can buy from the market as seen here and I believe getting this one just because of this card here again we haven't seen the barn yet but it's not unlikely it's coming out. So I think getting this early in the game is definitely worth it. Normally it would cost us 300 pounds minus 200, that's 100 quid. I take that. So we put it into our country estate improvements. I think I might get rid of this one sooner or later because table space might become an issue. And we just gained one victory point here. And when we are flipping this, we can flip this. We would then be at least, I think, tied with the Fairfax family. So I think think doing this this season before we move into the final um, or into the, the courtship might be beneficial but this is an ongoing ability now which allows us to use our white footman here as valets which can be pretty helpful actually so I think overall that wasn't a bad turn last thing to do everything will slide down here we are bringing out a new one and by the way, this second edition comes with this tile sorting number here, which is awesome because we know how to sort them right. I believe in the first edition there was some very strange ruling, very confusing stuff, but this makes it so clear. But here it doesn't really matter. We just bring out a new tile and it goes to the far right. And in this case, we have the retiring room for one lady. Ladies repair and relieve. It's relatively inexpensive. We can send a lady there and she would generate some extra reputation. If we use it, we flip it to the other side. It gives us three points, but still the same bonus. But three points is not nothing, I would say. Okay, let's think about that for a second. But that's pretty much our turn. We will move over to the AI player. So we are simply rolling a die here. And this chart is true for all of the players. And that's a two. Okay, we don't have any monuments out there. No, we don't. So we are looking at the standard turn. And this will be position number one, which is basically this tile that gets removed from this track. It's simply out of the game. So again, the AI doesn't score any points for those. There is a variant, keep in mind, where monuments are being scored at the end of the game. But apart from that, they're not doing anything. So again, we will refill the Builders market. So let's see what comes out of here. It's a very expensive one. And that's the North Dining Room. And I believe 
No, we don't. Why did I think? I think during my last game, I had the victory point card where I needed the North Dining Room. Okay, forget about this. So I'm, I'm not excited about this. I mean, this we can accommodate five gentry here. So five cards, which is huge. Gives us a lot of favors. But again, right now it would cost us 800 quid and uh, I'm not feeling like that. Okay, but that's already the end of the very first turn. So we move into this um, second turn here. Um, by the way, in the standard game, those theme cards tell you what the Fairchilds are looking for. Again, this will be one of the five categories, essential services, state prestige or sporting. So there are 10 cards to, to each of those. And again, in the standard game, you would reveal that at the start of each of those seasons here. In the solo game, you play, I think the Jane Austen variant or so it's called. Um, you basically reveal that only when you come here. So right now we are totally in a blind flight, but which is also pretty cool because you have to gamble a little bit on which of those you can will focus on. So there will always be a gap of at least one or two of those categories where you, I'm not so sure if I could win this, but again, you can mitigate the risk a little bit by saying, okay, three out of five I have covered, or even four out of five I have covered. Okie dokie, next turn, we will rotate our service, which means any expanded service will move into to the servants quarters from the servants quarters we could in theory uh, refresh one servant but we, it would cost us three reputation right now we have only one reputation here so we cannot spend it so that's at least something to consider but i think i may not need the butler right now yes in theory i can use the butler to get some extra um, service or staff or yeah, basically servants into my ranks but I think right now I don't need to do that I guess that's okay but what else I'm going to do I mean there is still something to consider in respect to those points here so again right now here we are tight so that's okay um, and we cannot do anything about that here. Again, if we would flip this, sorry for the glare, um, we would basically, I think it's one point on the other side. Yes, it is. We could also tie, but I think that's not going to happen this turn, but I might consider doing it next turn, depending on what comes out. Here, we could definitely, I think if we do this, we could also tie, and I think that's what I want to do. What's I need to do? Yeah, let's have an afternoon tea. So we will send it here. It requires one of our footmen. And again, this one alone generates two or gives us one prestige guest. Prestige guests are always victory points, which is amazing. Um, but apart from that, we have to bring two gentry and this can be any family lord lady you name it but i think in this case we will send our the viscount of dorchester edward so he belongs to my ponsonby family so i could go for either 100 quid or one extra reputation and here we will bring the honorable winston hayward the third son of viscount hayward winston eschews responsibility and spends his days in sport and society and drinking tea obviously so he requires one valet to be fully functional, it seems. So he cannot trust himself, but that was pretty usual back then. I keep hearing, and by the way, I really have watched everything from Downton Abbey, and I really like the show, actually. I liked it before my wife liked it, so this is definitely important to mention. Okay, now we have basically provided the service, everything is taken care of, so we will gain now our favors. We will definitely get 100 pounds here from Winston Hayward and this he doesn't really bring us money or so and there's really great explanation on the back of the rubrics where they where um, Dan Halligan the designer really speaks about those it's really like okay he's providing you some business opportunities through his with it and so on. really really highly thematic this game and again here I have to choose if I want another 100 quid or one reputation really have to get my reputation up I guess we will do that here accordingly okay this valet is now expended those two are tired and are retiring into the discount pile and then we can still buy from the market we have 500 pounds but before we do let's not forget the benefit the favor from our main gazebo here this is a prestige guest and we get one and these are never bad actually they're all great 
course, some are better than others. Okay, here we have Peter Viscount Townsend. The Viscount is a superb and honored sportsman, having traveled to India to hunt big game. Okay, he's bringing us three victory points. They're really much better cards in this deck. That's okay. He could give us 300 pounds, but we can only play him with um, a reputation of level four, unless we are moving to the national holiday later on. But I will come to that sooner or later too. Okay, let's grab him. He gets to our hand. We will flip this to the other side. This is now worth two victory points. And the next time we have an afternoon tea, the effect is not quite as powerful. We only get a casual guess, but at least we can see two and take one. That's definitely something. And now I get to buy from the builder's market here. And ah, that's really a tough one. I would really love to have the drawing room, but I don't have the money. In theory, I could spend reputation to gain money, but I don't have enough reputations. For every two reputation I spend, I get 100 pounds. I cannot do that. So maybe we really want to go for the breakfast room here because again it allows me to accommodate four gentry and again on the other side we could score five gentry even though and we could gain two victory points out of this and could help us later on throughout the game gaining some extra benefits or winning some of those courtship categories so i think yeah let's do that so we will spend three oops 300 pounds to grab the breakfast tile it goes into our estate it's an essential tile Everything will slide down here accordingly. We will bring out a new one. And we can only build one tile basically at this step. There is later on a builder's holiday where we can buy any amount. And here we have the North Library. And this is the library we need for this objective card here. So when I now see that the Fairfax family will grab this North Library, I'm pretty likely to get rid of this card as soon as I can. But again, let's see about that. It's now the Fairfax turn. So again, we will roll the die. That's a 10. We are still in a standard turn. That's position three, oh, which is really a bummer because it's this awesome drawing room here. Oh, I hate the Fairfax family already. Okay, we will slide everything down and bring out yet another tile into the builder's marking. And here we have the Great Hall. Oh, wow, six gentry. But right now that's a thousand pounds. But six gentry is definitely something if we host it gives us six points. This is really, really, really huge. Believe me. Okay, that's already the end of the turn. So we are moving on. We will now have our village fair. Before we do the village fair, we are allowed to rotate our service. This really happens before anything else and then we check the round track and the monuments and the servants hall and now we check the round track again we see hey we have a village fair and we have prepared the village fair so we basically gain now 300 pounds which is definitely not shabby at all and we would gain one two extra reputation nicely done ponsonby okay that was pretty much this now we are hosting an activity and as i really want to tie with a service, I think we will go with a butler's room now. Yeah, let's do some servant hiring. So in this case, we would just bring the butler here. So that's that. We are getting the favor right now. The only favor is more personnel. And we get any two right now. Because I have the footman ability, the brushing room, I would definitely go for another footman here because this he can also serve us as a valet. And I think we will go for a lady's maid for our second one. We cannot go for the underbutlers, unfortunately. There are two improvement tiles which would give us the underbutler automatically. So he's really strong, but we haven't seen that yet. And yeah, I think that's okay. We will grab those two and place them into the expansion service unfortunately so they would join him with the butler here so they have to get accustomed to how we are doing things here at Ponsonby Manor and so on. This goes to the other side which gives us the one extra victory point we needed to tie with the Fairfax family here so they will start with two points here um, and right now again it's something where you have to make some informed guess so right now here we are ahead here we are tight, here we are tight, here we are tight. So we are tight everywhere and here we are ahead. So if we are now drawing a sporting theme, then we are really in great shape actually. But yeah, let's see about that because no, first of all, we can still buy from the builder's mark. So we can even go beyond the tie actually. So with 
either of those i think we still have we have 500 pounds still we could even go with those i know here it do, don't wouldn't change a thing but with one of those we would definitely change things actually so we if we would go for the gable conservatory for some indoor constitutional we could actually that's pretty good actually this is three points. That's one point, but we pff, getting full aid. That's one of those hybrid tiles, so they keep changing when we are using them. So I think let's go with the gabled conservatory here. So we will spend the 300 quid. That gives us one more point. So we are now ahead. I think that could be okay, unless now monument is coming out. Um, then we might be really, really in a bad shape. But again, everything will slide down. We will bring out a new tile here. Uh, let's see about that. What did we get? And it's a billiards room. Okay, that's some sport aim for 800. Oh, that's some billiard room. That's for sure. And of course, before we move into the courtship, we have to roll the die for the Fairfax family. That's a 20, which means it's a standard turn. Basically, no purchase. No, I think that's a refresh now, right? No purchase and refresh. Oh, wow, really a refresh? I haven't thought about this. I think refresh really means they're refreshing the builder's mark, but it still counts as no purchase. So the next roll, they will definitely subtract five from the roll. So they will buy something, that's for sure. And yes, we will see a refresh, which means this North Library will be gone. So all of those tiles will go away and we will bring out six entirely new tiles. And I think I will do that off camera. This might be really lame. Let's look at the first one. That's the flower room. I think the flower room could be beneficial too, actually. But again, I will do the rest now off camera. And those are the new tiles. And again, we bring those out in tile sorting ordering here. So that's whenever we are drawing more than just one new tile, then we are looking at this really small number down here. The servants hall came out, which is the rumor mill, which I understand has changed from the very first edition of this game basically the first edition it was a freebie you could steal at the start of your turn one um, reputation from another player which means another player would lose one you would get one so that's definitely pretty cruel to do here at least you have to spend one of your servants into that so i think it's somehow balanced out and it's also relatively expensive that's i mean 500 quid you have to spend but it's really a great generator for reputations so I really might look into that sooner or later but again the AI or the Fairfax family didn't buy anything we haven't seen any monuments and yes I did shuffle them in three monuments are part of that huge and gigantic back here uh, but that's pretty much the turn of the Fairfax family we are moving into our first courtship so the first thing that we are doing now is to reveal what those heirs here want us to do how can we impress them so let's see let's see what is it okay it's service service is okay i would say because keep in mind we have tied with them so they have two victory points for the service category and we have two victory points in that which means none of us will get to invite one of the Fairchilds into our estate of course the AI player wouldn't do that only when doing the very f final courtship they would gain one because they're still worth eight victory points but they were really great you can use them they have pretty much a reputation rating of only one so you can always play them so having those is really great but we will definitely get one victory point card for the Fairfax family we will keep it face down so we don't know what it is but we will also gain one at least because we tied we still get the VP card and in this case that's not bad actually that's either four points if we keep it until the end of the game or we can basically discard it in order to draw two objective cards into our hand and then we can still score one additionally I think this is draw two and keep one or so I believe that's what it is in this case. Um, but that's pretty cool. Not sure why there are four cards on this. It's very confusing, but it's really two cards you're drawing. So when we are really feeling we don't get enough chances to score our objective cards, then we might really consider, okay, maybe it's no time to play this card. But for now, we will keep it. That's definitely four victory points for us, which is never a bad thing. That already was the courtship. So we are moving into the next round, into the next turn here. Now you see that here we will 
will now begin the service tile reserve. And I think this is also a change to the first edition of this game. So this means all service tiles will now move into the service tile reserve here in this case. So we can still get them here. The, everything still counts. So we still have to pay the extra 200 crit. But at least we are not clogging up the market. But this also means everything will slide down. As of the 30s, we will also put all the tiles with the prestige rating of one. That's this one here. And yeah, I think that's definitely something. So we will bring out a new tile. And here we have the servant's hall. Okay, that's another. Okay, this goes straight into the reserve too, obviously. And we are drawing a replacement. And here we have found our very first monument, the garden maze which we could buy for only 700 quid. You must be kidding me. Uh, a, a thousand quid, uh, what am I talking about? Seven victory points is it worth? But again, having those monuments, they will generate one reputation at the start of every round. That's really huge. And we know that the eye player will definitely go for those as, as much as possible. Again, they usually they score also for those points here in respect to any um, to the courtship, but doesn't really matter in the solo game. So we know for the second season that the Fairfax family will have two victory points here and they will massively improve on the sporting here. So they will have one victory point here. So I think this is really something which we have to change now basically through this or throughout this season here. Okay, uh, that's really a bummer and I'm pretty sure I will not be able to afford this. Thousand bucks is definitely so quit. Sorry for that is definitely something. Okay, one thing I forgot was to get rid of one of those objective cards. At the end of the game, you usually only score three of those cards. Mm, I think we just lost the North Library here and right now nothing else came out. So I think it's safe to say we want to get rid of that literature group here. We put it to the bottom of the objective deck, but I'm pretty sure we will never see it again in this playthrough here at least. And now we would actually move into our fifth turn or round or whatever you want to put it and again i will remain the starting player and will take it from there but i guess for today i will end my playthrough i really hope you're enjoying it i really hope i haven't messed things up if you already seen something which i did terribly wrong in respect to tactics strategy <laughs> Please absolutely let me know. And I have played the game only twice so far and far from being experienced here. I never played the solo game before. But again, the multiplayer game is such an ex wow, it's really an exquisite experience. It's so thematic. It's so beautifully done. I mean, all the love that went into this game. I mean, every family has this little sorting box here where the stuff is in there. Um, the artwork is so nice and yeah, it, it's really a lot of fun to play actually. I really, really enjoy this game. A big, big deal. A huge shout out to all of my patrons out there. Really, really appreciate your support. If you want to support my channel, you will definitely find a link to my patron. Patron, somewhere in the description of this video and it will pop up sooner or later in this video. You can also support me directly here on YouTube by joining my community. As usual, like and subscribe. Everything helps and yeah, I hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then, bye bye.